Hi guys, I hope you're doing well and in this video we are going to be discussing short run cost calculations. We have already seen in the previous video what is marginal cost, average fixed cost, average variable cost and average cost. In this video we're going to be using a table to basically calculate those values and then I am also going to be discussing some basic analysis that what we can analyze, what we can conclude from those values increasing or decreasing and then in the next video we'll move on to the graphs. So guys, what I've done here is I've, I've basically shown a table that is telling us um, the fixed cost, the labor, the variable in total and total product, total cost as well. And let's assume this is a pizza factory and it's telling us that our fixed cost is $5,000 for all levels of output. Then we have our labor, which is a variable factor in the short term. It keeps on increasing from one to six as we keep on scaling up our output. Then we have the variable cost, which is obviously the cost that changes with output. Um, the more output produced, the more is the variable cost. And let's say for the sake of simplicity, for the sake of just understanding concepts, let's assume that, you know, labor is the only variable factor right now. Like, you know, let's assume that, you know, just for the sake of simplicity, although obviously raw material and other variable factors would also be, um, you know, uh, part of variable cost. But let's say for the sake of this question, let's assume that labor is our only variable factor, only for the sake of this question. Moving forward, um, or it's up to you. You could also assume that it's not the only variable factor and it could also in the total the, the variable cost could also include raw material whatever suits you whatever just comforts you it's up to you anyways total cost is basically uh, the sum of fixed cost and variable cost the total product is telling us the total um, output that we have produced so it's telling us that if we, if we have hired one labor so the you know the total output in terms of you know pizza is 10, 10 pizzas if we hired two labor the total output is 25 pizzas and so on and so forth now what i want you guys to do is that i want you guys to pause this video right now okay pause this video and i want you to fill in these columns right you need to calculate the marginal product because total product is given so you can calculate the marginal product the marginal cost i want to calculate the average variable cost average fixed cost and average total cost okay guys you're back and i'm assuming you guys must have done the calculations and in fact i have also done my calculations as well so you guys can see I have calculated the marginal product, the marginal cost, the average variable cost, the average fixed cost and the average total cost also known as the average cost. Okay guys, first of all uh, what we need to see over here is that we need to see what's happening here. So first of all, um, uh, you know, how have I calculated the marginal cost? So we all know what marginal product is, we have seen in the previous videos, it is the extra output that is um, contributed to the total output the extra output because of the hiring of an extra worker right so the extra output is 15 and then we see that the marginal cost is 267 how have we calculated that it is simply the change in total cost divided by the change in the quantity of the output so the total cost rises from 7000 to 11000 um, and uh, the output rises from 10 to 25 so if we produce 15 extra units right so the additional cost that is incurred is basically how much it is basically um, the additional cost incurred per unit, in fact, is basically 267. So 267 is representing the additional cost that is incurred when we produce another unit, right? In total, we produced 15 extra units, but per unit additional cost incurred is how much? It is 267. Okay, guys, so there's another thing that I want you to notice over here is that uh, since the marginal product is given as well, so you can see that initially when we hire, uh, you know, two workers from first we had one worker, so the total product was 10. When we had another worker, total product jumped to 25, so the marginal product is 15. And when we hire the three, third worker, total, uh, the marginal product rises to 20. And then from fourth worker, we see that diminishing return sets in basically, right? So the marginal product basically falls to 13. Now, if you guys have forgotten about diminishing returns is, or you, or you haven't watched that video, so I would suggest that you watch the diminishing returns video first. It's on the supply theory playlist. And then when we hire the fifth and the sixth worker, we see that the marginal product starts to fall more sharply, more steeply at a faster rate. It falls to then seven, and then, you know, it falls to five and so on and so forth. So guys, now what we are going to be doing is that since we have calculated the values, we have calculated what average uh, variable cost is, what average fixed cost is, and what the average cost is. We just, how have we calculated the va average variable cost? We have divided the, you know, the variable cost by the total output of 25, so 6,000 divided by 25, 9,000 divided by 45 is basically, you know, um, giving us the average variable cost. How have we calculated the average fixed cost? We have simply taken the fixed cost of 5 and divided it by the output of, you know, 25, we've taken 5,000 divided by 45, 5,000 divided by 58, and so on and so forth. This is how we've calculated the average fixed cost and the average total cost, how we have done it. So there are two ways, either you just take the total cost, let's say 11,000, divide that by 25, you get the average total cost, or another way is you just 
add up the average variable cost with the average fixed cost, so you get the average total cost. Okay, so moving forward, from this table, from these figures, we are now going to be doing some brief analysis uh, before we move on to the graphs in the next video. That, you know, let's, let's see what is happening to the marginal product, let's see what's happening to the marginal cost, the average variable cost, the average fixed cost, and the average total cost. So guys, first, let's see what's happened to the marginal product in this video. So guys, what's happening is that the marginal product, we see that it is initially increasing due to specialization and increasing labor productivity. So there's basically increasing returns to scale. So the variable factors are, you know, utilizing the fixed factors in a very good manner in a very, uh, and that's resulting into increasing returns to scale because initially those fixed factors were underutilized. And now since the variable factors are utilizing them, so it's resulting into higher productivity and specialization because of specialization, the marginal product is rising. So there's better utilization of fixed resources. But then this only happens up till, you know, uh, the fourth worker because since we have, because the moment we hire the fourth worker, the marginal product falls to 13. So, so basically when diminishing return basically kicks in at the fourth worker, the marginal product basically declines. And so basically what we see is that at the fourth worker, the marginal product declines, which means and so on and so forth, it keeps on declining then. So, and this occurs because of diminishing returns and then the fixed factors becomes a constraint um, for the variable factors, right? So the more variable factors you add to the fixed factor, you know, your marginal product rate eventually starts falling and that is where the diminishing return concept we studied in the diminishing returns video. So that is what is telling us about the marginal product. Now, guys, marginal product and marginal cost have a close relationship, basically. So if you look, if you analyze the marginal cost, what you see over here is basically uh, what's, what's happening here is that marginal cost, if, if, if you see the marginal cost, when you hire the second worker, as in when you hire two workers and then the total output rises from 10 to 25 and 45, 58. So the marginal cost initially is falling from 267, it falls to, you know, 150. And then, you know, once your diminishing return kicks in, what happens is that your marginal cost starts to rise. So from 267, it falls to 150. Then from 150, it rises to 231. The moment the diminishing marginal return kicks in. And then from 231, all the additional cost, so basically the additional cost that is incurred because of producing another unit just keeps on rising. First it rises by 231, which means that if you produce another unit, the additional cost incurred is 231. And then which means that, you know, then again when you produce another unit, the additional cost incurred is 429 for the firm. And then again when you produce another unit, the additional cost incurred is 6. So you can see that the marginal cost is rising very sharply, steeply it's rising, right? Because the simple reason for that is just like, when the marginal product is falling uh, sharply, so marginal cost is also rising sharply, and the reason is that diminishing marginal returns just, you know, the, the diminishing returns just keeps on worsening itself. So, when you're adding more and more variable factors on a fixed factor, the extent or the 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 magnitude of the, or of the diminishing returns, the magnitude of the, of the worsening, the, the wave of the diminishing return just keeps on worsening, and then that's why the marginal product you know falls steeply and marginal cost starts you know rise rising steeply so initially so if you study the behavior from these figures if you study the behavior of the marginal cost initially the marginal cost falls due to specialization and increasing labor productivity that we know um, you know and then after diminishing return sets in the marginal cost basically starts rising as you know as we see that when marginal product is falling marginal cost is rising so so basically marginal product and marginal cost are following the same relationship they are following the same pattern if marginal product is rising, right, marginal cost will be falling. So if MP is rising, marginal crop, so is, as, like I've written, as, as MP falls, marginal cost rises. But as MP rises, the marginal cost falls, right? So this is an important relationship that as students you guys need to know, right? So as MP falls, marginal cost rises, as MP rises, marginal cost falls. And this is again due to this relationship or this behavior of the marginal product and marginal cost is simply following the law of diminishing returns and that's it in the short run. Understood guys, now let's move on to, let's study what's happening to the behavior of the average variable cost. Now if you study the very behavior of the average variable cost, you see that average variable cost initially falls from 250 to 200, then from 200 to 2, it rises to 207, the moment diminishing return kicks in, and then to 231 and 257. So what's happening to average variable cost is, that average cost, the, the average variable cost is also initially falling and then it's rising because of diminishing returns. So the behavior of the average variable cost is, you know, First, it initially falls, and that's simply because of increasing returns to labor and specialization since variable factors, they specialize and they coordinate, and then it increases the productivity of the labor, and then since labor is the only variable factor in the short run, right? But then, you know, and then it, they better utilize the fixed re resources, 
but then when you know what happens is that when diminishing return kicks in at the fourth worker the average variable cost would start to rise so basically what we see is that once diminishing return kicks in at the fourth worker we see that your marginal product falls and then your marginal cost is rising you know um, and then what we see is that the that the average variable cost also rises that is variable cost per unit starts to rise if once your diminishing return kicks in so we so from this so how is this useful to us it's useful to us because it's telling us that the pattern or the behavior of the average variable cost the behavior of the marginal cost the behavior of the marginal product is all dependent on the law of diminishing returns um, i mean you know initially the average variable cost would fall but then when labor productivity and marginal product would be falling because of diminishing returns the average variable cost would start rising so basically in this video what we are discussing is that we are studying the behavior of it through the numbers and then in the in the next video we'll be studying it through the graphs we'll actually be drawing those graphs so you know it would be much easier for me to draw those graphs now because now i've explained you the behavior so once you know the behavior it would be easy to study the graphs as well now let's move on to what's happening to the average fixed cost so if you see the average fixed cost is basically just you know constantly falling it falls from 200 to 101 and then from 101 to it falls to 86 and then 77 and 71 so average fixed cost we see it constantly falling and we do not experience any kind of disruption because of diminishing returns in the average fixed cost so which obviously means that you know the nature of the average fixed cost is that it will constantly fall so average fixed cost the behavior of the average fixed cost is not dependent on diminishing returns because I mean, it's a fixed cost, right? It has to be incurred irrespective of whether you produce anything or not. It's just the it's just when you add more and more variable factors on those fixed factors, it's that is the reason why diminishing return sets in when the fixed factors becomes a constraint. So, so you have to just pay the fixed cost even if you're adding variable factors or not adding variable factors or you're producing anything or not producing anything. That is why the average fixed cost is also not dependent on diminishing returns. So basically, the average fixed cost just keeps on falling because, and the simple reason is that the average fixed cost is calculated as fixed cost divided by the quantity of the output or you know the total product the output basically so since the fixed cost the numerator is constant and the, this just keeps on increasing the, the value of the average fixed cost just keeps on falling so fixed costs are basically spread the technical word is that they are spread over a higher volume of output and that is what keeps the average fixed cost fall so since output is rising but fixed costs do not change your output is rising but you know your so basically your output is rising fixed costs do not change so, you know, your average fixed cost just keeps on falling. So average fixed cost, guys, is not influenced by diminishing returns, right? Now, m moving on, what is happening to the behavior of the total average total cost or the average cost? So average total average cost is basically average total cost. So, you know, at times, if you, if you see that the word average cost is written, just assume it's average total cost, right? So average total cost, we see it falls from 440 to 331 and then from 331 to 293. And then 293, it rises to 308 and 329. So guys, we see that the average cost is basically first falling and then the average cost rises. Now here I want to tell you that although the diminishing returns has set in at the fourth worker, now I want you to pay very close attention to this. Although the diminishing returns has set in at the fourth worker, we know that. But which means so you might by you might you guys might be thinking that if diminishing return is set in at the fourth worker, the average cost must rise. But yeah, you're right. I mean Technically, average cost will at point ra at one point rise, but it's not because of the diminishing returns that will actually pull the average cost up. It's because of the marginal cost. We have studied in the previous videos as well that marginal drives the average, right? So what happens is that um, although we see that, so if you if you look at the behavior of the marginal cost, look at this. We see that the so if you look at this. The marginal cost uh, of so the marginal cost is basically 150, right over here. But 150 is so the so the so basically when you so when you hire three workers and when you produce you know 45 units, those three workers end up producing 45 units in total. So um, what I'm saying over here is that um, the extra cost incurred is 150 per as in as in you know the extra cost incurred for producing an additional unit is 150 and that is basically less than the average that is basically less than what the per unit actually cost on an average so one unit so per unit average cost is 440 which means that that is what is the you know cost on an average for a single unit to produce right but the additional cost incurred uh, to produce an additional unit is basically 150 which is less than the average right and that pulls the average down from 440 to 331 
and you see that you know this is the this line this this row here the diminishing returns are set in but you see you know um, so so once the diminishing return sets in the marginal cost rises from 150 it rises to 231 so the marginal cost goes up from 150 to 231 but you still see that the average still falls from 331 to 293 so it's not that once the diminishing return kicks in the average cost would start falling no it's not that diminishing returns would not ultim although yes it will have an impact but why will it have an impact by the way so if i'm saying it will have an impact just think two minute pause but you think why will it have an impact because obviously it will drive the marginal cost up so ultimately the marginal cost will become greater than the average and ultimately it will pull the average up that's why that's the, the reason what i'm saying but what i'm saying is that you know at the fourth worker the diminishing return sets in and your average basically and your marginal cost rises from 150 to 231 but guys the thing is that even if your marginal cost rises from 150 to 231 still it's less than the average of 331 so the average is 331 which means that on an average a single unit cost 331 dollars to produce while the extra cost incurred in producing that addition on uh, while the extra cost incurred in producing an additional unit was 231 which was less than the average of 331 so that pulled the average down again but then again like i said that depends diminishing return kicks in it just keeps on worsening itself so the marginal cost rises at a faster rate so the marginal cost then you know for producing because when you produce an additional unit then the marginal cost, um, that is the extra cost because of producing an extra unit is now $429, which is obviously 429 is greater than what the average is of 293 is because the extra unit resulted into an extra cost of 429. That's what marginal cost is, guys. But then the average cost of producing, that is the one unit cost on an, as in one unit on an average costed you 293 there's a there's a reason why I'm just twisting my words because I want you to you know one thing एक चीज को अपना दो तीन perspective में समझें ताकि आपके you know your concept just gets broadened up. Basically I enjoy teaching in this way as well honestly. So basically your marginal cost is basically now greater than your average cost and that actually pulls the average up from 293 to 308. Right and then again the marginal cost of 600 is again now more than what the average of three you know average cost is three of 308 that again pulls the average up to 399. So that's the reason why your average cost initially falls and then it starts rising. The same concept that we studied why you know in when we were talking about marginal product and average product. So guys initially what's what's happening here is that you know in average cost falls initially and then rises because if marginal cost is less than average cost average cost would fall. And if marginal cost is greater than average cost, average cost, average cost would basically increase. And remember that marginal cost touches the average cost at its lowest point, right? Okay, guys, so now we are going to be studying the graphs in the next video. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, take care.